Hey guys and welcome back to the show. So we're back here with the Warplane game series. And in this part, I'm gonna be showing you how to create one of these little select screens. So here we've got all our planes. And as you can see there, they're not moving if they're not selected. If we click on one, it's gonna start rotating. It's gonna spin up, looks really cool. And if we select a different one, it's gonna snap back to position and so on. Whatever we click on, we go to play, we will have that. Pretty cool. So if we have the white one selected, there we go. If we go red and so on, quite neat. So this project file I've got open is um, from where we left off. The only thing I've added is the play button over here. If I say go, you can see it flicks between the two. Um, obviously this is gonna be a hover effect. We're gonna need a room to select our planes. So I'm gonna call this choose. And it's going to be a 192 uh, 1080 room. Uh, just like that, let's zoom out a bit. Okay, so that's gonna fill our whole screen. And in this room, we're gonna actually place the button. So we're gonna have the play button and let's give it the play sprite. On create, uh, let's close this room for now. On create, we need to set the image speed to zero because we've got multiple sub images that's gonna flick through at that room speed, which is gonna be very ugly. So let's force that to remain static but I'm going to add a step event that's gonna detect if the mouse is hovering um, over. This button, and if it is, then we're gonna set the image index to one. Otherwise the image index is gonna be back to zero. Okay. Very good, now that we've got that, let's go back to our choose room, put that at the first index. Whoa, I want to set, is the room inherited? No, 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 I wanna put it above. There it is. And that's this one, let's bring the play button in over there, quite nice. And if we're going to play, we're gonna say, okay, you can close choose. We're gonna say when the mouse clicks on it, very simple, room go to uh, RM world, there we go. Okay, so when we click play, it's gonna go to the game world. Now you're probably wondering, well, what happens if someone doesn't select a plane? Well, we're gonna just mitigate that risk by pre-selecting a plane to start. So there isn't gonna exist a state where no plane is selected. Okay, so next we need the actual selector. Um, this is gonna be those little planes that were spinning around that we saw in the demo. So on create event, I'm gonna say by default, it's not selected. Um, the image angle is gonna be set to 90 degrees, so that's upright. And the image speed is gonna be zero. Because it's not selected, the propeller isn't gonna be rotating. But if it is selected, so here we're gonna say, well, if selected, then we're gonna do different things. Um, our image angle is going to, I'm gonna say minus equal so that it rotates, uh, I think it's clockwise. The image speed is now gonna be the default uh, 30. I'm just gonna fix that spelling. And here's where we can put in the else. This is just gonna say, you know, back to default, image angle equals 90, um, and image speed equals zero. And we just reset, reset that back to what it was on create. And much like the button, we have to put in the mouse left pressed event. Now, what I like to do with these selectors, um, when we've got multiples of the same thing, which do different things depending on how we click them, um, I'm gonna say with all of them, you know, let's get them all to a, to a not selected state. Let's say selected equals false. So none of them are selected. And I think we've already done the image speed over there, so we don't have to do it in here. Okay, so they're all not selected. And then outside here, I can say with this particular one, it is selected. So you just like that. So we've deselected everything and selected this one. It's a lot easier than saying, get me all selectors that aren't this one and set them to false, but set this one to true. This is a much more efficient approach. Just, just go for the whole lot and then select just this um, instance as true. Then we're gonna set something called global sprite. This is gonna be our global resource for 
sending the sprite into the room. So when we go into the next room, when the user clicks play, we can then set this global sprite to the sprite index of the, uh, the, the player's plane. So you'll have the correct sprite set. So this doesn't really do anything right now because it's, it's nowhere to be seen. There's nowhere to select. We need to go into room choose, into the creation code, do some magic to, to, um, to spawn these in that choose screen. And to do this, we're gonna be using a, a loop. Um, note there are one, two, three, four, five. There are five sprites, so we're gonna start count five. And I've identified the first X coordinate to be 300 pixels. And the Y coordinate, I'm going to go for the height of the room. And let's just divide by two. That'll center that on the height. All right, so for var i equals zero, i is less than count i plus plus with, and here I'm going to create an instance on the layer at x, x, y, y. Oh, we need a lowercase c. I'm on the instances layer of type object selector, there it is. So with the instance that we just created. So this this with in, um, encapsulates that new instance. So any anything I do inside here is gonna be relating to properties of this new instance. So here's a cool thing you might not have known about. I, I wouldn't really recommend using it too often, but I'm setting the sprite index to i. i is, is an index because you see the each sprites here, it's actually an array. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, because i is an integer, I can use that to access that array item, saying that if it's the first element, it'll be the white plane, if it's second one, and so on and so on, sand, red, uh, olive, and brown. Now, obviously, this doesn't work too well if you've got a larger project and uh, maybe someone else is maintaining it, they're not aware of, of, of this usage, and they shift and change the indexes <laughs> of these, you can end up with some disastrous results. So perhaps in a production setting, it's not a good idea to, to use these. So obviously use um, with immense caution. So we set our sprite to i, we're gonna say, well, if i is the first one, which is zero, then I'm going to pre-select it. I'm also gonna set the global sprite, there it is, equal to this one. So not, not only are we pre-selecting the, the selector, but we're also saying in the global scope, this is gonna be the one. If the user goes and clicks the play button immediately after they're not interacting with this true screen at all, that's the one it's gonna go for. Then once we've created one of these guys, I need to increment um, X by another 300 pixels. This 300 is approximately the width of the plane um, rotate 90 degrees plus a little bit of fat because you can see the the width which is currently the height right now is 150 so it's exactly two planes worth so there'll be a good amount of, of space in between each one um, so here we go we got room uh, choose we got that in now we need to say okay well what happens if the user selects a guy then he clicks the play button well right now we're not using global sprite we need to go and actually use that object play over here um, let's close room choose I think, let's see, where did we set the sprite? Was that in the, yeah, okay, so this was in here. This was in the, the parent because they were all kind of using the same story. They all randomly decided, let's cut that out. So the parent's now not gonna decide on the sprites. We're gonna move that into the enemy because the enemy still needs to be random. So let's just put that right at the top. The player, on the other hand, it's gonna get its sprite directly, right, index directly from the global dot sprite, just like that. So to recap on all this, what we got is a choose room. We've got a selector, um, which does the nice little animation of spinning around when you select it. It's also inside its creation code, it's gonna be generating those five sprites or the five instances of objects that represent those sprites. Again, we're using a very risky tactic here to set the sprites up using the array integer, i. When the user selects one of those selectors, which we see back here in our workspace, it's going to make it come alive by setting selected to true, by deselecting everything else and setting up the global sprite value. Okay, cool, and then that's uh, used here in the create event because when we go to the world, the game world, 
um, which we get to from the object play over here. That's when it's going to render our plane. It's gonna create an instance of that and it's gonna go through the create event, which will um, go back to here, grab the sprite from there. So let's save up, let's try this out. Cool, so as expected, the white plane is rotating clockwise. Should be able to do this. That's quite nice. All right. Ah, this one's not spinning. Ah, I keep doing this time and time again. I don't know why it's not saving properly. This needs to be all the same. Otherwise, we can have inconsistent speeds of our propeller blades throughout the game. There we go. Save. Should we run? There we go, much better, they're all the same. Okay, cool, so let's go for the, the Red Baron-esque kind of plane. And um, if we click play, we should end up with the sprite and the enemies will still be all kinds of different colors. And then we should actually be right back where we were with the previous video. There we go, we red, we got health flying around. We should get some enemies shortly and they should be all the different colors. Okay, there's another red guy. Let's see who else we've got around here. There we go, we've got two greens and the brown one. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. And let me know what you want me to tackle next. I think we're gonna be going for a heads up display. That's gonna be a really cool thing to add. Or maybe even some high scores, see how long you can last, maybe waves of enemies. If you really like this video, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really appreciate the support. Project files for this can be found in the description as always. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.